everyone, welcome back. I'm Dai, and today I'm bringing you the wrap-up for all of the manga I read in September. I read 19 volumes of manga in September. I also participated in the Mang Autumn Readathon, which was hosted by Dylan and Melissa over on Twitter and a little bit on Instagram. I will link them down in the description box below as well as the Readathon Twitter so that you can check out check it out for the next um, round but I had a really great time during the readathon and I did read quite a bit um, during the month as well so since there's a lot of volumes to wrap up let's get into it the first volumes I read were Ghost Hunt volumes 1 through 5 this is by Shiho Inada and the stories by Fuyumi Ono Ghost Hunt follows a team of paranormal investigators as they solve supernatural mysteries. We are really enjoying this series and I am borrowing it from the library. In fact, I do have volumes 6 through 11, which were the volumes that were released uh, by Del Rey, on hold for me at the library right now. I am going to go pick them up today, so I should be able to finish the series in October. Like I said, I'm really enjoying it. The volumes are very episodic. They cover one to two cases per volume. Um, sometimes the case overlaps volumes. And so since I have been borrowing them from the library, I try not to read the volume if it has a case that's carrying over to a volume that I don't have. But yeah, I'm really enjoying this one. I'm definitely going to be checking out the anime when I am done reading it. Unfortunately, the 12th volume of this series, which is the final volume, was not published in English. So for me, the story will end at 11. I'm not sure where the anime series leaves off, but since the volumes are the way they are, I don't think this should be an issue unless the case that they're working in volume 11 is one of those that carries over to volume 12. But I'll just have to wait and see. Like I said, I'm really enjoying this one. I'm looking forward to more. So the next series I read was Dictatorial Grimoire. This is a three volume series by Ayumi Kano. I again borrowed this from the library. I do have a series thoughts video on this one. So I will link it up in the cards in the description box below. This one follows Otogi Grimm, who is a descendant of the Brothers Grimm, as he finds out that his ancestors bargained away the lives of their descendants in exchange for the fairy tales that we know. I'll have um, a lot more of my thoughts on this series, but the short of it is that while I did enjoy this series, I am kind of disappointed that it was such a short series. It had a lot of potential um, and while I did enjoy what I read, I think there were things that could have been fleshed out a little more and definitely I still had questions about a lot of things in the end. But go check out my video and see what more I had to say on that. The next uh, few volumes I read for my In Real Life Manga Club, we read Akame Ga Kill Volume 1 by Takahiro. This one follows a character named Tatsumi as he leaves his impoverished village in order to try to get work in the capital and make enough money to save his village. He learns very quickly though that things are not as they seem in the capital and maybe the infamous team of assassins he's heard so much about are actually the good guys. I surprisingly enjoyed this one quite a bit. I had it in my collection for a while. It was a Manga Monday pickup and I just never read it. Um, so when we pulled it out of the box for our manga club as a read, it was definitely something I was looking forward to. There is a scene in here that involves a pair of gigantic scissors, which was shocking. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely interested in reading more of this one. The next volume that we read was the first volume of Terrified Teacher at Ghoul School by Mai Tanaka. 
This one follows Haruaki, who wants nothing more than to be a teacher, but unfortunately, he's kind of spineless. And on his first day at school, he gets bullied by some of the students and flees, never to return to his job or the school again. After a year, he tries to overcome his fears and is hired by another school, but he doesn't know that this school is full of supernatural creatures who like to play pranks. As he tries to keep his fears at bay, he'll also figure out that he's a little more special than he may know. This one was a little more comedic than I enjoy as far as things that I read in general. I was expecting the comedy aspect, but for me it was just too much, I guess. Um, Haruaki as a character is very spineless. He, <laughs> to the point where it's more than hilarious for me and it's almost irritating. Um, I had really high expectations going into this one because I had heard a lot of really great things about the series. But this one, while it was funny and I did enjoy it, it didn't hit that mark for me. And I realize it's the first volume and there's so much more story to be told. I can definitely see character growth with Haruaki. Um, so I'm looking forward to see how he overcomes his fears more and maybe changes some of the students in the process. But yeah, our group really enjoyed this one as well. Um, they are mostly teenagers, so the things that kind of got to me didn't bother them as much but I'll probably read more of this title um, it was enjoyable though not as great as I had expected it to be and you know that's something that happens with expectations and um, but yeah definitely enjoyed that one even though it wasn't as great as I thought it was going to be so then we continued our series read of Oran High School Host Club with volume 7 and 8 by Bisco Hattori. This one, I'm sure you've all heard me talk about it several times um, since we are doing this series read, but for those of you who may not know, follows Haruhi, who's a scholarship student at an affluent school. She wants to find a quiet place to study, but instead finds the host club, who's a group of six affluent and attractive guys who spend their days entertaining the girls of the school with parties and events. This meeting not only changes Haruhi's life as she's unwillingly made to join their club, but the lives of each member of the host club as they get to know her. I'm really enjoying my reread of this series. I didn't read the whole thing um, when I had read it before, but I am still in the volumes where I had read them before. We are also still in story that is portrayed in the anime. So I'm really looking forward to getting past uh, where we are in the anime because for me, that those are the stories that stick out the most as I've watched the anime a few times. Um, I don't quite remember much of what has happened past that, or what I read past that. So it'll be interesting for me to finally get to the volumes where we are no longer in anime territory. And I'm really looking forward to it. So then I read the volumes for the Mangotum Readathon. I actually read Ghost Hunt volumes 4 and 5, I believe, for... Um, the Mangata Readathon. I also read volumes 1, 2, and 3 of He's My Only Vampire by Aya Shiroto. This is another series that I am borrowing from my library. I had actually seen Lita over at Lita Kino. I'll link her down in the description box below. She's no longer um, making YouTube videos, uh, but I do follow her on Instagram and Twitter, and this is one of the series that she started reading recently, and I had to check it out. This one follows Kana, who has a trauma in her past. We're not quite sure of what that trauma is, um, but we kind of get glimpses of it as we read. And anyway, she seems to be happily living her high school life, but one day she gets hit by a car only to be saved from death by a childhood friend named Aki. 
It turns out Aki is a vampire, and in saving her, he makes her his thrall, thus connecting her to him for eternity. Aki is on a mission to obtain the seven stigmas in order to save his brother, and now with Kana at his side, it has become a dangerous game as they compete with others for these stigmas. So this is totally a fluff read for me. I'm really enjoying it so far. Um, we do get some other types of supernatural creatures in this series, at least as far as in these first three volumes. I'm really interested to find out what happened in Kana's past, like in her childhood, there's a trauma. And it has something to do either with Aki and his brother or around Aki and his brother. But it, it's definitely during the time that she had known them. Um, so that's going to be interesting to find out. Also, one of the characters that we met also has a connection to Kana in regards to another trauma that she had more recently. And he kind of joins their little group. And so seeing them gather the stigmas is definitely something else I'm interested in. But there's also this like underlying line storyline about Aki and his brother and Kana and um, their relationship to each other. They're kind of hinting at something, and I really want to know more about it, especially as to why Aki's brother needs saving. Um, I'm not sure if Aki's brother is also a vampire or not. It's not really clear, um, any of that, but definitely interested to find out. It is a fluff read. I'm really enjoying it. The volumes go by super fast. This is a 10 volume series and I anticipate being done with it by the end of October as well. Then I read Fire Force Volume 2. Um, this one's by Atsushi Okubo. This one follows Shinra who when he was young manifested the ability to create and control fire. In this world people spontaneously combust and turn into fire demons called infernals. This unfortunately happened to Shinra's mother and he lost his baby brother in the blaze his mother created when she turned. Since then, his sole mission has been to find out why people turn into infernals, and that has led him to work with the Fire Force, a special team of firefighters tasked with putting these infernals to rest. With the help of his teammates, they uncover that these occurrences may not be random at all, and that someone may be creating infernal, infernals on purpose. This is an anime that I am following regularly. It is on hiatus right now, or at least as of the date that I'm filming this video, but I am really enjoying the anime so much so that I feel like I'm not getting the story fast enough. Thankfully, I do own ver um, copies of this manga, so I can read it whenever I feel like it. I've read like I said, two volumes so far, and it does follow the anime very closely, which makes me very happy. And so I'm anxiously awaiting the anime to come back. I think for me, and I've said this in other like videos when I talk about novel adaptations, if I read it before I watch it, then there's expectation and I don't enjoy what I watch as much as I read. So I think I'm gonna continue watching before I read. Now we're so much further ahead than where I am reading that it's not really a problem, but I kinda think that when the season's over, I'm gonna wanna read past. We'll see how I feel. Um, once the season's over, but I'm definitely enjoying the anime and this manga as well. Then I read Promised Neverland Volume 2 by Kayu Shirai, illustrated by Posuka Demizu. This was a, or I think it was one of the first um, series that we read for my In Real Life Manga Club. 
This one follows a group of orphans who live a blissful life at their orphanage until they find out that perhaps things are not what they were led to believe. Um, I think that's all I can really say without giving stuff away. A pretty major plot point was dropped in the first volume. Again, this is one that everybody is raving about right now, and I'm just kind of not feeling the same enthusiasm for it. It is interesting. I do like this mystery aspect to it, uh, but it's not as good as I, or I feel it's not as good as I'm hearing people say it is. Um, I don't know if it's because I read a lot of mysteries that this is not capturing my attention as much as other people. Um, but I'm not feeling the urge to continue reading this series right away. I do have two more volumes of this series in my collection. But yeah, I, I took a couple months hiatus between volumes one and then reading volume two in September. And I don't feel the immediate need to pick up volume three and read it. Um, now, it's not to say it's not enjoyable, it's just not capturing my attention right now. So maybe I'm not just, maybe I'm just not in the right headspace to read it. Um, it is interesting, but not enough where I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to pick up the next volume immediately. So then I read the first volume of Grand Guignol Orchestra by Kaori Yuki. This is a five volume series and in this world there are people who have been infected with a virus that turns them into guignols or doll-like zombies. The series follows a team of musicians who travel the land calming the guignols with their music. This is a series where I own volumes one, two, and three, but I have had to borrow volumes four and five from the library. I was thinking I was going to read um, the full series in September. However, I'm going to save it for the Manga Freakathon that's happening at the end of October. This one is a new readathon that's being hosted by Bizarre Individual, Mama Loves Manga, and The Panda Post. I will link uh, Bizarre's and Mama Loves Manga's videos down in the description box below. Definitely check it out. It's happening on the 19th through the 31st of October, I believe. There's a scavenger hunt bingo board um, that they're doing. And I think the theme is to read like spooky manga. And this is what's classified as gothic horror, I believe, um, this series. And... I think Bazaar is also planning on reading this series in, um, for the readathon. So while I did read the first volume for the Mangata readathon, I will probably reread it for the Manga Freakathon and read through the rest of the series as well. This was very interesting. It's very text heavy. Um, so it did take me a longer amount of time to read through the volume. But the art is gorgeous. Um, I'm definitely interested to see what comes of this story. It's kind of episodic as well since each time they travel to a different land there's a different case where they're, you know, battling with these guignols and yeah, I'm definitely interested to see where this story goes and where it ends up. So the last volume I read for September, as well as for the Mangatam re Readathon, was The Way of the House Husband. This one's by Ono Kosuke, and it follows a former Yakuza member who had had the title The Immortal Dragon, but has now left the life and is anything but an ordinary house husband. He makes meals and cleans the house while his wife fulfills her dreams of having a career. This was definitely a very enjoyable volume. I didn't know what to expect when I went into it. I had 
seen it on the Manga Monday sale again from Barnes & Noble and decided to go ahead and pick it up. It was so funny. The art style is very interesting. In On the chapter pages within the manga, there's this beautiful illustration of um, these oriental dragons. And it's also found on the back of the manga in gold. And I believe it's part of the tattoo that our main character has on his back. You find out very soon um, within the first couple pages what that tattoo looks like. But I didn't actually go back and look. I presume that's what it is, um, his tattoo. But it's just, it's gorgeous. I love it. The story was so funny. Um, he definitely does like house chores and makes meals, but he does it in like a gangster style. He like puts his flair into it. Even when he's out shopping for deals or he's like taking cooking classes, it's really entertaining to watch. I'm really interested to find out how he met his wife. There's a couple panels in this first volume that kind of give you a taste of that. Um, but I really want to know how they got together or how he met her. Um, and she's just, they're like complete opposites. She, she's very down to earth. She's, she doesn't seem to be anything but a normal career woman. So... Yeah, their dynamic as a married couple is very interesting. You can see that he really like cares about her. He makes such an effort to make her cute bentos and and things like that. And his interactions with other people is hilarious. And also his interactions with his former Yakuza members. Um, we see him meet up with one while he's out shopping. <laughs> he kind of is like, well, if you want to talk to me, you've got to go with me to this cooking class. And now this, his previous member kind of wants to be like him, wanted to be like him when he was the immortal dragon and now wants to follow in his footsteps to be an amazing house husband. And it was just super entertaining. I'm really looking forward to reading more in this series. So that completes everything that I read manga-wise in September. Um, plans for October is, like I said, I'm going to participate in the Manga Freakathon. I'm also participating in the 48-hour Fall Into Manga Love Readathon that's being hosted by Shay over at Shay Geeks Out. I'll link her video announcement in the description box below as well. But by the time this, you watch this video, um, the readathon will be ongoing on its last 24 hours. So those are my plans for upcoming manga readathons and manga reads. And yeah, let me know if you read any of these and what you thought of them, or if you plan on reading any of these titles in the future, or if you're planning on participating in either one of the readathons that I mentioned. So that's all I've got for you today. I hope you're all doing great, and until next time, take care, and smile always. Bye!